this race, it's not for the timid or for the faint-hearted. You're gonna face obstacles. I mean, it's gonna happen. In 260 miles, something's gonna go wrong. The Texas Water Safari is the world's toughest canoe race. I've gone down the Amazon, I've gone down the Volga, and they had their own difficulties, but as for, you know, just beating the crap out of you, that's the safari. You basically just like either have to lay down and die or keep going. The Texas Water Safari is a 260 mile canoe race that starts in the city of San Marcos and goes down to the Gulf of Mexico. Over that 260 miles, you've got a number of challenges. Some years we have 110, 115 degree heat. The toughest part of the race is the log jams. Fire ants are everywhere. Lots of snakes. 14 to 15 foot gators. And you don't want to stop, because if you stop paddling, the mosquitoes get you. This race, you are basically self-sufficient. You've got to carry everything in your boat that you need for the 260 miles, except for water or food. I think that actually the biggest challenge in the Texas Water Safari is not nature itself. I think it's the mental. It's the want. You know, you got to have that will to do it. And they all do it for the same reason, you know, to win a patch. The people who do this race, you've got white collar, blue collar, and some people that aren't all there. You've got a team that we call the Cowboys. Every year they do the race, they wear cowboy hats and they wear bright colored leotard pants. The goal is 39 hours with no serious, serious injuries, no amputations. We're good. Then you'll have uh, all girls teams. Seeing how far you can take your body and your mind is the ultimate question. And this race tests that in ways that other things just don't. Some people will go knowing they have 100 hours to complete it. And so their goal is just to finish. Our goal, first and foremost, don't die, because our wives will kill us twice if that happens. <laughs> Some people divide it up into actually two races. That first 90 miles, it's twisty, narrow, lots of sharp turns, sometimes shallow water, getting in and out of the boat. It changes dramatically after the first day. Come that second day when you've been up all night, Saturday night, you know, it's hot, boats slow down, it starts to take a toll on you. Different parts of you are uncomfortable at different times. I mean, if you're dry heaving, then you're really not concentrating on your back pain that much. In the boat, when you're, when you're racing, you're going hard, you got guys throwing up, you know, laying down in the middle of the boat, cramping. You'll hear somebody just yell out, just shut up and paddle, just keep moving. You can go about 45 to 48 hours without sleep. That's typically when the hallucinations start kicking in. I see these cartoon characters like eating dinner with each other. The tree might look like a huge goblin head. Large pandas waving at me. Clowns lining the riverbanks. It's not a clown. Miles of clowns. Then after that, you get into a lot of log jams. And uh, you're just hammered by the time you get there. And, and you've got a mile long portage. Okay. Keep going, keep going. All right, all right. Let's go. Crossing the bay at night, that's a different experience because you've got waves crashing at you. You don't see what's coming at you. So if we can break the female record, we are looking at a really, really dark night bay crossing. It's gonna be interesting to see how that goes. You get down to the bay and you're almost there. They've got seven miles to the finish line, but you have no idea what you're gonna get. It could be a glass bay, you can go across it in two hours. It could be four foot, five foot waves, and you could spend 24 hours out there. We've had teams get almost to the finish line and not make it because of the bay. At 2.39 a.m., Virginia and I broke the women's Texas water safari 
overall time record um, by three hours and 18 minutes. You are pushed to such mental extremes that you just don't get pushed to in daily life, which is honestly the real reason I think people do this race. Why sit in a cubicle? This seems a lot more natural to me coming out and doing something like this. This is what we're built to do. I mean, we're built to move. Being in front of the computer all day, every day, gets pretty mundane, so it's good to kind of get back to, to nature and have an adventure. The race itself is not about what you get at the end. It's not that you've won anything, it's, it's just what you have done. It helps you deal with a lot of life's challenges. You know, I've done the safari, you know, I can do this. I can put my head down and just keep paddling. I think society has become more tamed. I think there's still something in all of us that looks for that raw challenge. Just that feeling of accomplishment that it was you and the river and you made it. Basically I have a solid blisters everywhere. I had this one here started as one and then another blister formed on top of it, but pretty much every joint has a blister, even right here, from the sun. Probably take 15, 20 years for me to forget this to make the mistake of doing it again. <laughs>